Interior office day. Mark O sits quietly at a reception desk. He stares straight ahead. Nigel bursts through the glass double doors to Marco's right. Marco jumps at the sudden noise. Nigel strides up to Marco confidently. I'm here to see Beverly. Marco looks confused. Oh, uh, okay. Um, do you have an appointment? I, I don't need an appointment. I'm his friend. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but you do have to have an appointment to meet with Mr. St. Chair. Nigel burps uh, loudly. Are you drunk? Fuck you, robot. Nigel swipes Marco's nameplate off his desk and walks into the office. Hey, sir. Nigel doesn't look back. The office is one big circle. Various doors line the walls and a pit full of bean bags sits in the center. Nigel passes an open door on his right. He does a double take when he sees Ether sitting in a small utility closet. He screws an eye back into a mauled Marco head covered in red dust. Nigel steps up to the door. Hey man, uh, you seen Beverly? Ether's head snaps up to see Nigel, and in one swift motion, he slams the door in Nigel's face. Nigel stands looking at the door for a beat. Damn. Nigel looks out into the quiet office. He clocks an open door across the beanbag pit. Huh. Nigel jumps into the beanbag pit and practically swims through it on his way to the open door. He emerges out of the beanbags on the other side of the pit and walks into the open door. Interior, Kiana's office, continuous. Nigel enters a fairly small, windowless office. No one is in it. The nameplate on the desk reads, Kiana Baines. Nigel picks it up. Kiana Baines. On the desk sit two empty cups of Greek yogurt. On the wall to the left of the desk is a huge poster of Aaron Baines in a Phoenix Suns jersey getting dunked on. Nigel walks around the desk and sits in the chair. He rocks the chair back and forth. It squeaks loudly. Pretty solid. Nigel wrenches open Kiana's desk drawer. He pulls out a green circular pin. In the center of the pin is the silhouette of what looks like a hyena head. Green is the loneliest color that you'll ever do. Nigel puts the pin in his pocket. Interior office continuous. Nigel exits Kiana's office and looks around. He sees another open door a few to the left. He strides toward it confidently. Interior Priscilla's office continuous. Nigel saunters into Priscilla's office. She sits with her back toward him, looking out the window. She holds a stress ball in one hand and a phone in the other. You're the ice faction. You're literally covered in ice. All you're supposed to do is go ice fishing. She listens on the other end. Then where are all of the fish, Jerry? More listening. Whatever. You know what, Jerry? I am done with this convo. Get me more fish or we cut funding. She hangs up violently and whirls around. Fucking icy fu- ah! Priscilla jumps at the side of Nigel. Where's Beverly? Who the fuck are you? I, I'm Nigel. Why are you here? I'm here to see Beverly. Where, where is he at? In, in his office. Oh, uh, okay, sick, sick, sick. Nigel doesn't move. He stands, hands in pockets, and looks around the room. Can I help you? Nigel points to a framed photo of Priscilla in Princely. I think I know that guy. Yeah, he's, he's, he's pretty famous. Cool, 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 cool. Nigel points to a poster for the movie Aquamarine on Priscilla's wall. Aquamarine, huh? Can you please just get out? Yeah, uh, sure. Where's Bev's office? Priscilla points left. Over there. Uh, all right, thanks. Nigel exits. Priscilla drops her face into her hands. Nigel pops his head back in the door. J uh, just that way, yeah? Get the fuck out! Nigel leaves again. Interior office, continuous. Nigel struts over to Beverly's open door. Interior Beverly's office, continuous. Beverly sits in a desk chair and stuffs money into an envelope. Nigel bursts into the office. Hey, man! Beverly jumps and swipes the envelope off the desk. Before he can remove it, Nigel reads, Dustin Leftovers, on the address line. What are you doing here, man? Uh, I, I just thought I'd come say hi. Okay, well, I'm at work right now. It is really not a good time. Huh. Wh what do you do at work anyway? Beverly sniffs in Nigel's direction. Are you drunk right now? I don't, I don't know. I wouldn't say drunk. I've had a few Aperol spritzes and a Truly, but uh, I mean, I'm pretty I'm pretty chill, chill, chill. All right, you, you gotta go. Huh? Get out of here, man. I can't have you here right now. Okay, I, I can jump into the room almost here, uh, or I can come back when you're done. Uh, Priscilla seemed pretty chill. Get out of here. Nigel sits in stunned silence. Beverly breathes heavily and stares him down. Jeez, man, I, I, I just want to see you. Nigel gets up and trudges out the door. 
Beverly watches him go. Yahtzee. Nigel turns around. What was that? Nothing, man. Just get out of here. Nigel turns and exits. Interior office continuous. Nigel shuffles past Marco's desk. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, sir. Nigel exits the office without even a glance at Marco. Exterior Mermaid Kingdom, night. Priscilla swims down the streets of the Mermaid Kingdom in mermaid form. She hangs up posters that read, Have you seen a drag queen with this wig? Printed in the middle of the poster is a picture of the curly blonde wig she found at Queer Waters after her father was shot. She swims up to the Queer Waters drag club. She hangs a poster by the door and glances into the window. Inside she sees hundreds of drag queens in blonde curly wigs dance inside. She sighs and swims on. Interior Nigel's loft, night. Nigel lies on his back in bed. He stares up at the lofted ceiling of his dimly lit apartment. A foghorn blows in the distance. He gasps and interior Nigel's yacht, night, flashback. Childhood Nigel lies on his back in bed. He stares up at the swaying ceiling of his childhood yacht. Nigel sighs. Gotta pee. Nigel slides out of bed. He puts on his furry slippers and shuffles out of his bedroom. Interior yacht hallway continuous. Nigel trudges through the hallway. He hears something. Nigel stops in his tracks and listens. Kissing sounds emanate from a door down the hall. Nigel moves carefully toward the door. The sound gets louder and louder. Nigel opens the door just a crack to see his mother kissing a human-sized fish in bed. Mom? Smash cut to interior Nigel's loft, night, present day. Nigel's expression changes. It's almost as if Nigel has turned into a completely different person. He slides out of bed and walks over to his closet. Nigel swings open his closet and reaches to the top shelf. He pulls something down and Nigel puts on a curly blonde wig. Cut to black.